uh, Helen Stredwick, who is the Senior Assistant Keeper of Egyptian Antiquities at the Fitzwilliam Museum. Um, she's also the principal investigator in a project to study and publish the museum's extensive collection of ancient Egyptian coffins. And she leads a team that includes Egyptologists, conservators, a historian of woodworking and a consultant radiologist. Um, she works extensively with colleagues in museums in Egypt, providing them with training workshops in curation and new techniques in artifact studies. And for the last 18 months, she's also worked as head of collections at the museum, um, but she's now returned to full time Egyptology. Um, and in order to give Helen plenty of time to speak, I will hand straight over to her now. Hi there, thanks Alexandra very much. Um, and uh, apologies because uh, I'm in the museum and it's going to be starting to close and there'll be repeated announcements about getting out of the museum. So apologies for that. And I, I also want to say um, huge thanks to Ken for um, bringing this to my attention, this conference and inviting me to speak at it. And um, I feel like a kind of, um, I don't know, an inadequate member of this group because um, I've come to this party very late in the day and I'm really just feeling my way through the Welcome Collection because um, this is going to be a bit of a confession that um, I was really unaware of the extent of our Welcome Collection until Ken contacted me and I started looking into it. So just to give you some background, um, I'm sure most of you know that the Fitzwilliam Museum is in Cambridge. It was founded in 1816 by this chap, the seventh Viscount Fitzwilliam of Merion, um, who had no particular interest in Egypt at all. Um, and so the collection that arrived had no Egyptian artefacts in it. Um, in fact, there was no building, of course, at that time, and we had to have a building built to house all of the collection. Um, the, the collection built up through a number of um, people, particularly, for example, Petrie and his excavations and associated excavations of, of the um, Egypt Exploration Fund, British Schools of Archaeology and things like that. Um, another significant benefactor was Edward Towery White, of whom I can find absolutely no photographs at all. Um, but this is a watercolour that he made of a coffin, uh, and I'm studying coffins, so the coffins always feature somewhere in every talk I do. Gail Anderson was another very significant donor to our co uh, collections, actually gave 44% of our collection, um, and you know, it was quite a big benefactor of other places, including of course the British Museum. Um, and then uh, Robert Hyde Gregg, so Robert Hyde Gregg, was, um, who was ambassador of Egypt, left his collection to the Fitzwilliam Museum in 1956. And um, really, those were the significant donors to our collections um, and until the Welcome Collection, in fact, really. Um, and that was quite some news to me. So um, I, I'm in memory of a colleague of mine who died last year, Jenny Marchant, who was a wonderful conservator and started a talk by showing a washing line. I'm going to be doing what she was doing and, sh and sharing an awful lot of dirty washing, actually. The washing in this washing line has got some rather grubby marks on it. So anyway, the washing I will be sharing is a bit grubby too, because um, and 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 I know that other um, museum people around the world will recognise some of what I'm saying, um, and so I'm not going to be so embarrassed about it. I just know that our records are really not very good, and that's part of the problem um, of my struggles with trying to get this talk together to in, in any kind of meaningful way. Our museum records, um, like many other records, are, consist of things on paper, like um, these object cards, um, where objects were given a, a four-digit number. So the original number of this particular object is 1363. Um, and that later on, it, was a, it acquired a different number, which was E81924. Um, that is now not written in that form, but it's basically the same number. So these were the original cards and then the, num the, the information was transcribed and reinterpreted sometimes onto slip book records like this. Um, so here we see 8, 1924 without the E. Um, then uh, we created a modes database and um, the information was transferred onto there. You see the number has now become E.8.1924. 
Um, that was then transferred onto an ad lib database and uh, you see the record here still is e.8.1924 um, and now we have um, access to it from home which is wonderful so I can actually edit records um, on our database using Axial and so that's the same record that you see there. So I'm sorry to give you all this kind of preliminary but it's, it's it necessary in a way to understand what I'm going to be saying about the issues that we have with um, the collection. So um, more number problems to share with you um, and that is that for bizarre reasons best known to people at the Fitzwilliam Museum before I arrived, um, ancient Near Eastern objects um, uh, were somehow catalogued under Egypt as well. Um, so our numbers now look like this. So ancient Near Eastern objects look like A N E dot um, sequential number dot and then the year of their accession and Egyptian objects likewise E dot sequential number dot year of accession and Greek, Roman and Cypriot same um, the prefix is gr dot sequential number dot year number. So that's how they are now. But ancient Near Eastern ob objects in the collection um, originally had simply e numbers. So um, often, if you will, if you make an inquiry to us about an e object. Um, you will get an answer that, that is a bit confusing because there are both Egyptian objects and ancient Near Eastern objects that have E numbers. And sometimes um, you have both an E1 1935, I'm making this up slightly, so, and also an ANE1 1935. But in other cases you don't, you have um, the, the numbers kind of had gaps in them left because objects were moved out of the E number sequence into the next version of the ancient Near Eastern object numbering scheme, which was to call them West Asiatic objects, but they still retained their E, so they became WAE numbers. And, um, and then in the 2000s, um, we decided this was so confusing, we would change it to ANE numbers. So, um, so objects with E numbers um, are difficult sometimes to identify um, and because the Welcome Collection contained quite a few ancient Near Eastern objects or as they called them Western As West, West Asiatic um, objects um, that's the reason why I'm telling you this rather tortuous and unfortunate tale. Um, so in 1981 um, the Fitzwilliam Museum received a collection of objects from Welcome and this was reported in the, um, um, the re annual report for 1981 as um, by far the largest gift received in 1981 was of antiquities and a few later items from the Welcome Institute of History and Medicine. The Institute's trustees have been allocating to selected public museums and, and you know, uh, you can imagine the, um, the trustees of the Fitzwilliam Museum, whom we call the syndics, liking to think that they were selected public museums. In, British, in Britain, um, objects not required for the new medical and technological displays of their collection at the Science Museum. The Greek and Roman bronzes form the richest portion received by the Fitzwilliam. Indeed, they constitute by far the largest gift of such bronzes ever, re ever to reach the museum. Their coming may be seen as a tribute partly to the preeminence in this field of our former honorary keeper of classical antiquities, Dr. Winifred Lamb, who died in 1963, partly to the alertness of Mr. Nichols, who was our keeper of antiquities at that time. <coughs> Uh, sorry to do that. Um, so in addition to um, objects that came into the Egyptian collection, there were um, applied art um, objects, sculptures, ceramics, things called oriental objects. And very occasionally there are things that, that one might think might have belonged to the Egyptian collection in the oriental collection. Um, I haven't had yet have a chance to check whether there are any in the welcome collection in that category. Um, there were also um, objects that went initially to the coins and medals department and then were later transferred to the antiquities department and those include tokens 
um, including some um, quite quite interesting tokens, I must say, um, and seals, um, which have a variety of numbers, particularly CG numbers and um, CM numbers. Um, and those now are as incorporated into the antiquities collection and kind of float freely between um, the three sort of subsections of of the department of antiquities that is Egypt, Greece, Roman and Cyprus and the ancient Near East. So again numbering is issues occur there. So in the collection that came to the um, Egyptian and West Asiatic um, portion therefore a received e numbers at that time um, were these so um, a coal pot a knife a saw possibly a situla fragment a statuette fragment a, a couple of handles a sensor a necklace with stamped medallions uh, a lamp and um, also for the Egyptian section, um, a spear, and where I've written now added, that means that um, I, I've now identified that as a welcome object because it wasn't identified as such before. Um, a jugglet and an unguent horn. And then there are also these various ancient Near Eastern objects which originally had E numbers. So they, as they appear there, they, that's their current numbering. But they appeared originally as objects that appeared in the Egyptian collection or the E collection, if you like. Um, so there's a battle axe and some Lewiston bronzes and a knife or a spatula. And here's just um, a selection of those, some of those objects. So this is the sensor, which is rather nice. It shows a young chap with a Phrygian cap on um, and an unguent horn, which is absolutely beautiful. I have to say it's one of my favourite objects. Um, and a Tel Aviv Yehudia wear jug. And it, well, this, I just thought I had to show you a Lewiston bronze because I think they're, they're gorgeous too. And this is a, apparently a whetstone. Then in 1982, a second slew of objects, actually larger from up for us, came into the museum as well. Um, and this is the report for 1982. Gifts galore continued to be attracted from the Wellcome Institute for the History of Medicine. Seals and other West Asiatic antiquities Egyptian antiquities including flint instruments, pottery and carvings in bone and ivory, pottery vases, lamps and statuettes and terracotta, also engraved gems and ivories illustrating cultures deriving from Greece or Rome. These with our other acquisitions listed below made 1982 an annus mirabilis for our antiquities department. And here's a selection of some of those items that came in. So this is a beautiful, um, I think it's a bone plaque. Um, a new comedy mask, which I um, just discovered today, had been put down as a coffin attachment. Um, it does come from Egypt, but it's certainly not a coffin attachment. Um, uh, this female figure, which is rather lovely. And this cosmetic palette. And I included also pictures of um, two spindle bottles, which um, it, it's interesting whether these are E objects or ANE objects. Um, but I, at the moment, they're, they're numbered as E objects. Um, so that, um, oh, I realised I didn't put the right number on that one. That's E436, 1982. Um, they're described in the annual report as two lustrous red pottery spindle bottles imported into Egypt, possibly Palestinian circa 1550 to 1400 BC, formerly McGregor collection. Um, and then you can see the way the written number has been written there is E435 or E436 hyphen 1982, because that's a whole nother variant on the numbering scheme in the Fitzwilliam Museum. The reason I've sort of focused slightly on these was because they were something that Ken wrote to me about and I, um, I'm really grateful to him for having done so. And I know he talked about them again in his own talk yesterday. So just, um, I'm, I'm not going to take up a huge amount of your, your time today because I, I, my embarrassment is that um, what I've discovered is that our records for these objects are miserable and awful. And um, so uh, most of the time I've been spending over the last few days, um, instead of preparing this, has actually been kind of trying to sort out our database records so that those of you who are going to be searching online 
at least going to be able to find some of these objects because at present they're almost impossible to discover. Um, but what I was able to discover was that um, in 1981, it looks as if we received 13 numbers, uh, 13 objects that we now number as E objects, so Egyptian objects. In 1982, that was 120. And there was an additional object in 1983, which I think was just one stray object that kind of appeared out of nowhere and had been missed in being accessioned the previous year. Um, but because of the ANE -E situation, I've also included some um, numbers here for the number of objects that we received into the ancient Near East collection, because some of those are Egyptian objects too, rather than ancient Near Eastern objects. Um, so there are eight in 1981, 120 in 1982, and um, again one in 1983. Um, so, just to really wrap up, um, we do have quite a lot of documentation here, um, but it, it's sort of scrappy and it, it takes the form of all sorts of kinds of lists um, that were produced by people in order to present these materials to the syndicate, which is our, our trustees, for acceptance into the museum's collections. Um, these lists contradict each other very slightly in places. Um, the numbering um, is a bit um, confused in places and so unpicking it has been quite challenging. And um, there are also um, various documents um, that have come to us, I think, um, from the welcome people themselves, but it's not absolutely clear. Um, but what if there is a note, a set of notes that Janine Burio, who was our keeper at the time, made, presumably because she was trying to find out more information about how Welcome had acquired these. And I spent some time reading through her notes, um, and um, many of you will know that Janine's not that well at the moment, so I'm not able to contact her to ask her um, to clarify some of the notes that she's written. What I can see is that she clearly had some phone conversations with three individuals. Um, so one was Ro Rosemary Milligan, the archivist. Um, and so she's written a whole scad of notes about um, what Rosemary knew about the collection and how it formed. Also with someone called Georgina, which I just realised and therefore modified my talk to say Georgina Russell on the basis of um, one of the previous speakers, it wasn't Carl, I can't remember his name, it was Daniel, wasn't it? Daniel mentioned Georgina Russell. So um, he, she also had quite extensive conversations with Georgina. And um, then there's a set of notes also that seem to imply she was talking to somebody called the chief cataloguer. But who that was, I don't know. And I'd be quite interested to know if people can, can help me unpick that and to understand what that was about. Uh, we also have extensive co uh, correspondence relating to the seals that came from the Welcome um, uh, Institute to us as well. And um, correspondence also with Martin Hennig, who uh, was going to be producing a catalogue of those seals and who was able to kind of, you know, categorise them and, and come up with a, a separate catalogue of the welcome gems. And so the numbering sequence that we have um, for the welcome gems, again, it's a whole series of different numbers. There are welcome numbers which are given as W numbers. Um, and then there are CG numbers, as I mentioned, which I think are for Martin Hennig's gem catalogue. And then there are the CM numbers, which are seals which were also um, added into the collection but at that time they went into the coins and medals collection and acquired this cm number so as i say it is i feel like i'm um, doing an awful lot of talking about things that I, I don't know a great deal about and i'm embarrassed to say that i feel um, there's a huge amount more of work to do with the the welcome collection it's also noticeable to me that um, whereas I've now had time and, and the impetus to sit down and start 
annotating um, the records that are welcome collection objects in our collection now so that when you search I hope you will be able to find them more easily online um, I have not been able yet to have a con con conversation with my colleague Anastasia Christophilopoulou who is the curator of the Greek and Roman collection um, to do the same for hers because I note there are none of those objects noted online and in our databases as welcome objects um, so that's a big problem for us however on a trawl today in the museum um, because I only come into the museum every um, every week once a week on the whole so today I was in and I actually decided I ought to check whether the objects on display at least say that they are welcome collection objects and um, so I did a kind of quick trawl around our Egyptian galleries and indeed happily welcome collection objects do say that they are from there so that is the only bit of good news I feel I have to share with you so to conclude there's a huge amount more work to be done on our collection of objects and I'm embarrassed but I guess there are plenty of other people who will share that feeling um, and will know the, the, the sadnesses of curators of museums um, and the struggles that we all have to kind of unpick messes that um, art seem to be um, rather distant from oneself. So thank you for listening and I'm sorry that I don't have really very much more to share with you than that. There's, there's no need to apologise Helen, thank you, that was absolutely fascinating and I think uh, lots of people will recognise that position um, and I think the, uh, the thing to do is to see it as an opportunity and an excitement to try and piece the jigsaw together. Yeah exactly and I, I mean I'd say I think the impetus to do this and uh, this conference is so useful for that um, you know, it's really pushed me forward and it's helped also helped me to contextualise these things much better and actually to understand Janine's notes a bit better as well. Um, and you won't have had a chance to see this yet, but a couple of things in the chat that might be relevant. My colleague, uh, William Schuchbach, has uh, possibly identified the chief cataloguer, one of ah. the two people maybe. Um, and uh, I put an, uh, a note in to say that, uh, ironically, the slips we have relating to material that went to the Fitzwilliam are annotated with your object numbers, um, which is obviously in the way they were constructed when they came to you, um, mm -hmm. which is actually quite unusual. And our archives are full of correspondence uh, saying to other recipient museums, please don't send our slips back. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's probably uh, the, a bit of a missing piece of jigsaw. Um, that's some of those slips came back to us. Um, I do have a question for you, if you've got time before you're thrown out. I do, yeah. Um, somebody asking, could the Phrygian cap chap possibly have been Mithras or at least, at least Mithraic? Mm, I think that's an interesting observation. Yeah, it could be, absolutely. Um, I don't know if anyone has suggested that before. I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think that's, a, that's a, a nice suggestion, actually. Um, worth following up. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I can't see any more in the chat. Just while I'm waiting to see if any more come through, um, I will just say we uh, have asked Kyle if he would be so kind to repeat his whole section at the end of today for anyone who can um, stay on to listen. Um, so he'll, he'll get a, a second chance to go through That's his great. slides and, and finish them off. So please do hang around for that. Um, I've got one more question um, from um, William again, actually. I think the Fitzwilliam was one of the few recipient collections which referred to Mr Justice Foster in its labels. Was that required in Janine's notes? All right, I'm just doing a quick search for the word Foster in her notes and I don't, it's not finding anything. No. Sorry. Perhaps, perhaps that's something else that we can follow up. Um, after today. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, and um, Ruth Horry asking, um, oh, well, firstly, thank you, you for talking about the yeah, reality of museums collections. Um, are, the, are some of the objects you've talked about currently on display? Yes, they are happily. Um, there's there's quite a, a number of good objects. So like that unguent horn, um, the spindle bottles, um, the little uh, Phrygian chap, 
Um, those are on display in, in the galleries. Um, the little um, ivory figurine I showed as well of the woman. Uh, it's um, it's nice that they are. I mean, that was again something that I, I felt was important to just check before sort of coming online to make sure that those objects actually had an acknowledgement of the Welcome Collection in there. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, I can't see any more questions at this point, so I think I should let you leave before you're locked Thank in. Thank you. I, I have to run back to my desk now and um, and go and, and pack up. So thanks all very much. Thank and I'm so, so sorry, much. I'm going to have to leave this because it's been so interesting.